Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're driving a 2005 BMW 745Li. You know I'm a sucker for a long wheelbase, and a long 7 Series does the trick, but I always overlooked the E66 generation just because it was the start of the Bengal years, and this car never quite made the mark for me in the style department, but now, it's starting to look a little more rad. I know it's a 2000s car, but its ugliness is now sort of a redeeming feature of it. Prior to this car, we had probably the most beautiful 7 Series of all time, the E38, that was used in a James Bond film and left its handsome, stylish mark wherever it went. And when this car came out, it sort of had these bulbous haunches, kind of an awkward deck, but you can see the influence that this had across the BMW lineup over many years to come. It's powered by a 4.4 liter N62 naturally aspirated V8 that makes about 325 horsepower, 330 pound feet of torque. So it's not extremely fast in a straight line, but that typical BMW engine character gives you a nice meaty and torquey mid-range and really lets it run out to redline. But when we go for a ride and I show you the interior, you're going to see how BMW really did pull out all the stops to make this the ultimate driving machine, to make it a joy to get in and feel like you were in the lap of luxury. So first, let's just talk about the styling. We have so many gripes with today's BMW styling, and it almost makes us respect this more because we do have, of course, the iconic kidney grills, but they're not obnoxious. And interestingly, I can see a lot of LCI E46 3 Series in the front of this car. And when we come around back, these taillights really look like a 6 Series that was manufactured at the same time. But it's all about luxury. So we've got to put our golf bag in we've got of course our automatic opening trunk and all the goodies foot rests for the rear passengers but of course like any Maybach S-Class Rolls-Royce or Bentley owner you almost never use this stuff because you want to protect it I guess that's how you tell when people have real money when they use the cloth foot rests and their luxury cars soft closed doors all around absolutely gorgeous and then we have so much legroom because the real estate of this door in the long wheelbase version is outrageous. When we get in here, we get into a beautifully isolated and insulated cabin. All the outside world just disappears. Nothing matters. We've got cigarette lighters for both passengers in the back. In this center seat, of course, you could put someone in there, but there's your armrest with a giant cubby with nothing in it. You'd almost expect televisions in the back of this thing. Maybe that was an option and it just wasn't in it. But we also have our seat warmers for the rear passengers because this is a car that you would be driven in as much as you would drive. I can see this as a hotel car. We've got a single mirror for a passenger to look at themselves to see if their makeup is quite right for the event. But otherwise, the rear of the car is just ample legroom and uh, pretty simple and straightforward. No reclining seats or anything of that nature. Everything in the car is very soft. There's soft lines everywhere. Even the aluminum trim, it's all this brushed aluminum trim. It just has a softness, a texture to it that is very distinct of this time period in the BMW lineup. Holding it to the ground are 18 inch wheels wrapped in 245 section front and rear tires. Pretty straightforward stuff. Not the Performer because this isn't the 750 or the 760, which had a V12. So let's take a look under the hood. If you're a BMW fan, this is a vision you've seen before because if you've ever owned an N62, you've probably spent a lot of time under the hood of your N62. These are great engines. They sound fantastic. The power delivery is juicy and delicious, but they are known for having some major issues. Such is life in the BMW realm. So let's close it up and take it for a ride. Up front, we've got gorgeous plush leather seats and then all the seat controls you could desire. Heated seats, cooled seats, and for the front passengers, massage seats. When we get in, I gotta tell you, this is starting to feel a lot more Mercedes than BMW. We've got a wireless key fob, but I like it when you can place your key fob somewhere and then next to it, start stop button. A little bit of noise as the seat gets into place. It's either inflating or just moving. And then in here, we've got 
our big compartment, but the most important thing is our BMW Motorola StarTac. That is the ticket right there. That's what you like. I have such a thing for manufactured branded telephones of this era. I think that is so cool. And not only could you use it from there, right here you can actually dial with a full keypad your phone number. There's kind of absurd amounts of storage space in this thing. Cup holders, function, actually functional cup holders, we always appreciate that. Sunroof and all the goodies. But right here, we've got a control that might give some of you PTSD. This is like a proper old school iDrive. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm not even gonna try. I'm not, I, I've played with it for a few minutes and it made me almost burst into tears. This is, <laughs> this is a difficult device. Um, I think if you spend the time to figure it out, you'll be just fine. But the fact that this has anything to do with your HVAC system uh, gives me a heart attack. Thankfully, there are normal controls right here and you can turn you know, the radio volume down with a knob. If I needed to use that, that would not be good. To move the seat forward and back, we select what we want and then use this. It's very similar to the way you might adjust your mirrors. And then we'll pop on our seat massager and go for a drive. Now, what you'll notice too is that the shifter seems pretty familiar. That's a very Mercedes type shifter to use. I don't know who came first. I'm gonna go ahead and put my money on Mercedes. Let's jump out and see how she gets off to 60 miles an hour. So we'll move out here. We'll use our button for sport mode. And we're not gonna brake boost, we're just gonna roll into it. Not a monster powerhouse, but certainly a nice way to arrive at 60 miles an hour. The shifts are not aggressive, it's a six speed automatic transmission. But that's the thing, this is the lap of luxury. This is designed to take you there in comfort and this suspension, oh man, is it good. Because it doesn't just roly poly oly all over the place with body roll, it actually seems like it's got its stuff together. It keeps you in line, but it also absorbs all the ugliness around you in the world. The steering is beautiful. It's light, it's communicative. I'm actually shocked by how much I like driving this car. I think I've always discounted these as just like the cheap, ugly Duckling 7 Series. And while that may still be true, it can be good to drive at the same time. The steering wheel, man oh man, does this steering wheel date the car. And I love the idea that they were giving you essentially paddle shifters, but they put buttons up here with your thumb. You have to put it in manual mode. And I'm gonna tell you, I've tried it, um, I'm uncomfortable with these buttons. It feels like it doesn't just go into the next gear or the previous gear. It hustles. very much a sensation that you're sitting on a cloud. It's, it's absorbing everything really beautifully. I'm kind of shocked. It does not take much throttle in sport mode to get those revs up. So it does make that hyper sensitive for sure. So we'll go back into our normal drive mode. Cars of this era really had the right idea with some sidewall on the tires. With an 18 inch tire and a, I think it's a 245.50. That gives you additional play that you don't have to use the suspension to absorb. You can absorb a lot of little imperfections with the tire and not rely purely on those dampers.
despite being fairly heavy, it still can get around a corner. And I'll tell you, like driving maybe a Bentley from this time frame would have felt like a lot more effort to hustle it around that corner. You can tell that BMW tested these for speed, tested them to be on the road like this and uh, be thrashed around. It's pretty wild. But the other thing is out here in traffic, which we're going to get out of in a moment, but I think it's a reality of, of if you're owning one of these cars, you're probably just commuting to work every day. And today, because these are so cheap, it's like it's like a freebie luxury limo. It's incredible. I mean, I think these sell around like fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars, depending on condition. This has twenty-six thousand miles on it. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this if you were looking for like a Luxo barge. Because the reality is, luxury cars, of course, they get better over time. But if you're just looking for a supple ride, a car from two thousand five, two thousand six can still give you that supple ride. You just may not have all of the advanced features of a modern day car that costs two hundred thousand dollars. I feel like that's a reasonable sacrifice to make. It's not getting a fight with a dump truck. In terms of style, I think the Bengal 7 Series marked the beginning of the end for my love for BMW. I think I was so obsessed with the E36, the E46, the E39. Those were cars that I really identified with. And I just found like that is the handsome, beautiful, understated German Autobahn burner that I need in my life. And then this happened and we got the E60, the E92 and you know what I can forgive the E92 and I own mine for six years but it is certainly not the most beautiful BMW and I think that to take this design language and then try to make it beautiful later worked a little bit but it wasn't ideal. Eventually, now we're at a point where we're looking at some of the most heinous crimes against design, we're definitely going this way, with the new BMW three and four series with the grills and it's it's a little brutal um they're doubling down they're doing the thing man they're gonna just take it to the next level but for me it's just not it I do think it can sometimes be overwhelming to drive a long wheelbase or a large luxury vehicle because their job is to insulate you from the world, which is not great as a driver because as a driver, you need to feel the road. You need to feel what's going on. So the more you numb things like a Rolls Royce, the more difficult it is to actually drive the car because you can't feel it. BMW, I feel like, took a really good stance on this car because I feel everything. But at the same time, I'm still wafting all on the road. This is the driver's take on the luxury vehicle. And I always discounted this because I thought it was so ugly and because I think I was just mad at it. I was mad that this design existed and then took over for years to come. So I just, I never gave it a chance. But as a driver's car in 2022, I have to give it credit. This actually is really nice and lovely to drive. And it's possible that we are driving the greatest example of this car. Um, and let's see if we can get around this uh, actually kind of nice color X5. A 
gets up to speed so effortlessly, but not only that, the shifts are smooth, the shifts are supple, the shifts make you feel good that you're not getting tossed around in your luxury executive sedan. This is amazing to drive. And yeah, I, I, I've done myself a disservice by overlooking it because of its appearance and because of Chris Bangle. So, sorry Chris Bangle. kind of fascinated by the body control in this thing it actually handles well it feels like one cohesive piece i was expecting the front of the car would feel like a different entity than the rear of the car but it really does kind of hold its own So I'm gonna one hand this back to Bond Group. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And just a reminder, sometimes cars that you thought you hated might be okay. You gotta drive everything. And my message on the channel is always to not be just a fanboy, expand your automotive horizons. I think some people get so macho, they only wanna drive hot rods or like, you know, big power Camaros and stuff. But I'm telling you, you put the most macho dude in a Citroen 2CV or a 1960s Fiat 500, watch them smile. They'll be laughing. It's not a car they're probably gonna bring home, but you've gotta just experience this stuff. And for me, early Bengal BMWs are something that I just put my foot down against for so long. And uh, here we are, and here I am, expressing a little bit of love for this thing because it drives pretty, pretty, pretty well. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one.